Paul likes to use word plays. He likes to use two different words that in terms of their etymology, they're related to each other, but he's playing off one, off the other, those kinds of stuff. And word plays are really difficult to bring from Greek into English. In fact, they're hard to bring from any one language into another. And so when you hit these passages, a translator has a sometimes a really difficult decision. Do I bring the word play over and make the reader work hard to figure out what the words mean, or do I explain what the passage means and I just let the word play go? And what would you do in these situations? First uh, Timothy 1.8 has a, a pretty good example of this. Paul has been saying about the false teachers in Ephesus that they don't know what they're talking about. Uh, they're very confidently in making assertions, and they simply they don't know what they're talking about. And then you get to verse 8, and Paul is obviously wanting to qualify himself because he doesn't want to be misunderstood about what the law is about or, or whether we should be using it or not. And so he says, uh, but we know that good the namas is so the the law is good and then he adds his qualifier if someone uses it namimos so the word on play is namas namimos well translations like the esv and the nasb are going to keep the play on words the law is good if one uses it lawfully the problem is what does that mean and your know, good english style doesn't make you think through these things and so the CSB says legitimately. The Net Bible also says legitimately. NIV says it uses it properly. NLT is when used correctly. And so what they're doing, uh, these translations on the right, is they're, they've said, I can't bring the wordplay into English and make sense of it. So they're going to have to explain it. You know, the word nomimos only occurs one other time in the New Testament. And it's in 2 Timothy 2.5, you know, likewise, if anyone competes as an athlete, he does not receive a wealth unless he competes lawfully, and Ivy says, according to the rules. So that doesn't really help either. So this is just one of those instances where actually the wordplay is not hard to figure out, but it's kind of interesting to think through, well, what would you do if you were in my shoes? Now, related to wordplays, I just want to mention this, is when you are reading the same word or again versions of the same word and English style doesn't like us to repeat the same word over and over again it's considered poor style and so what are you going to do in these situations uh, places like the CSB or the ESV are going to tend to keep concordance so they say uh, for I speak on account of the grace which is given to me to all those who are among you do not then who per franeo, do not think more highly uh, than what is necessary franeo to think, but franeo um, sensibly, as God has distributed a measure of faith to each one. In other words, you have two uses of franeo and another use of who per franeo. And, you know, you go into a more stylish translation like the NIV and it says, we just can't say think three times in one sentence. It's poor English. So do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, ought to think, but rather think of yourself in sober judgment. It makes perfectly good sense, but you're not reproducing that particular uh, repeated Greek word. So it's kind of a similar situation as to word plays. But word plays are difficult because they're clever and we try to bring them into English if we can but the problem is that normally you can't uh, do that but it does raise an interesting issue is as a New Testament Christian how do we use the law lawfully how is the law intended to be used now it's I think one of the most difficult questions to answer exegetically I know Tom Schreiner has really helped us by giving us some good books on this topic and other people have as well but where is that midpoint, if you will, of what it means to use the law lawfully. And so for some people, they use it too much. That their, their whole preaching and their whole church is about law and obedience and this kind of stuff. And then there's other people that everything is on grace. And, you know, the fact that we are servants of 
Christ, or were slaves of Christ. Well, slaves have to be obedient to their master. I mean, the law is not irrelevant after all. Paul tells Timothy that all the scripture is God breathed, right? All of it comes from the mouth of God. So you have these two extremes. And I think it's really important as Christians that you find out, that I find out for myself, where is that midpoint of what does it mean to use the law lawfully? It's worth a good discussion in your next Bible study. Thanks.